Get ready to be inspired as I'm going to showcase 16 incredible thrift store makeovers that turn trash into treasure. I'm excited to show you how I'm going to upcycle mine and incorporate it into my craft room. Although the original finish on the spice rack was outdated, a quick fix with a scuff pad, which I've linked in the description below, to lightly sand the surface works perfect. This not only revealed a more modern looking color of wood, I just think that it also looks nicer than that dated orange stain. After wiping it down, I sealed it up with my engine enamel. This is really durable and will allow you to wipe it down or dust it after it's finished. And then I filled it up with a collection of my craft paints. Now I can easily see and access my paints. They're beautifully displayed in my craft room. And the spice bottles that were originally in the rack are the same size as these craft paint bottles. I have a bit of a mirror obsession. I just can't resist collecting them. But I love finding ways to upcycle them and give them a new life. This mirror caught my eye. It's a gold frame plastic one, but I saw potential in turning it into a rustic patina looking frame with just a little bit of acrylic and chalk paint and my trusty stencil brush, I used homemade black chalk paint first as the base, just lightly dry brushing all over that mirror. It's important to make sure to get into all those little nooks and crannies for that authentic patina effect. After setting it aside and letting it dry, I then went back in and got my acrylic paint and used a turquoise color. I'm aiming to achieve an old rusted metal look for this project and I've got a trick up my sleeve that's going to give it the perfect patina effect by layering that turquoise on top of the black with a light hand I'm dry brushing that turquoise over the frame allowing the gold and the black to peek through and it gives it a realistic weathered effect. When it's all finished it's going to be hard to believe that this started out as a cheap plastic frame and I absolutely love this transformation. I stumbled upon a real gem at the thrift store, a beautiful serving tray with a rattan border, but this dated stencil in the middle of it was not doing it any favors. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and revamp it completely. Firstly, I applied some paint stripper over the stencil in a well-ventilated area with my uh, respirator mask on. And since the stencil seemed to be paint based from probably the 70s or 80s, I was hopeful that that stripper would work its magic and it did. After letting it sit for about 15 or 20 minutes, I scraped away at it and the stencil started to come off. I repeated this process with a second coat of that paint stripper to ensure that I had every little bit of that stencil removed. After removing the label and that varnish completely, I decided to give it a really good wash with some soapy water, set it aside, and let it dry thoroughly. Once it was dry, I went back in with a 120 grit piece of sanding paper on my sander to remove any leftover little bits of varnish and stencil that might not have come off with that paint remover. With the surface now smooth and ready, I mixed up some instant coffee with hot water and applied it on the tray using a rag. This is a really great DIY stain. The result was perfect. It was a perfect match to the color of the rest of the tray. Once the coffee stain had completely dried, I sealed it up with some polyacrylic sealer and we transformed this old dated thrift store tray into a stylish modern piece.
It'll be perfect for serving drinks up on the patio this summer, or I can just display it on my table as a centerpiece. I found this sprig of greenery also at the thrift store, but it had these cheap looking white flowers on it. Took them all off. It looked way better after they were done, but I still wanted to elevate it. So I got some of my white acrylic paint and I dry brushed the leaves and it just kind of made them look more expensive and high end. I also found this handmade pottery vase that's just gorgeous, $3.49. So I added that sprig of greenery into it that little bit of dusting of white acrylic paint on it made it look so it's not so faux and it looked perfect on my little end. I fell in love with this pot as soon as I saw it. Handmade pottery. I seem to be drawn to all of these pottery pieces at the thrift store lately. And I am going to make a macrame hanger for this pot. After measuring out how much of the twine I needed, this twine I actually bought at the dollar store too, I've put it all together to make three strands now the wooden rings if you are in the thrift store have a look on the wall where they have all the little bags put together because i found a full bag of these wooden rings i think there might have been 12 in the bag for like 3.99 and i have been making macrame hangers with these for quite a while i'm adding a piece at the top to secure that wooden ring on trimming off the edges and then we're going to do a little bit of macrame if you don't know how to ma macrame there's so many great tutorials on youtube here that you can check out but i'm just doing a couple really basic knots to put this together shopping secondhand before buying new is such a smart choice for several reasons First and foremost, it's a great way to find unique items that you won't see in everyone else's home. You can discover vintage clothing, one-of-a-kind pieces, and even high-end designer items at a fraction of the cost. And secondhand shopping is also an eco-friendly option as it helps reduce the amount of waste that ends up in our landfills. By purchasing items that have already been produced, you're preventing new resources from being used and reducing the demand for new items. Additionally, many secondhand shops donate a portion of their profits to charitable causes, so you're supporting a good cause when you shop secondhand. Okay, I've got my hanger almost finished. I'm just going to tie it now through those three holes that were already made in that ceramic pot to secure it really well. And then after I have them all tied, I'm going to gather it at the bottom of the pot and make a tassel. Despite all of my DIY experience, there's one thing that I've never tried before, and that's making pottery. It's been on my bucket list for a while now, and I'm really looking forward in the near future to take a pottery class and finally create some beautiful homemade pottery pieces of my own. I'm thrilled to finally hang this in our log home and put a little plant inside. It looks beautiful hanging in the window, and it just adds a little bit of greenery and nature to our space store for $5.99 and cutting boards can be really expensive although it was still in really good shape it had a few scratches and stains and I knew I could bring it back to life easily and quickly first I removed the hanger from the top so it wouldn't get in the way and then I used my palm sander with a 20 grit sandpaper to make it nice and smooth I don't think it was ever sealed so I'm going to use my butcher block oil to make it food safe it's easy to use and all you have to do is rub it on the wood with a rag, wait a couple hours, I like to put on a second coat and it'll be as good as new, ready to use in your kitchen. I'll put a link down below in the description to this product. Other products that you can use to seal a cutting board to make it food grade is mineral oil or you can also use beeswax. These are commonly used to seal up cutting boards. It's important to avoid using regular cooking oils like vegetable or olive oil as these can go rancid and potentially contaminate your food. Upcycle is this vintage basket that I found at the thrift store for $3.49. While the teddy bears in the basket are incredibly cute, the overall design was just really outdated, screaming early 2000s. 
However, the basket itself is in great condition and it has so much potential. I decided to strip everything down to the basket so I could use it for a new project. And as for the teddy bears, I couldn't bear to throw them away. So they're gonna be donated along with the fabric pieces to the local thrift store. And I'm sure they're gonna bring joy to another little owner. Do you remember when we used to dot letters with paint? Back in the early 2000s, this little heart had that technique done on it, but it can be upcycled and made beautiful again. With just a simple cleaning and some faux greenery, this old basket looks perfect again. But that's not all. Let me show you what I did with this little wooden heart that was on the inside. After sanding it down to reveal that natural wood grain, I just left a touch of that original white paint for that charming whitewashed effect. I sealed it all with some polyacrylic sealer. Store finds don't have to be left behind just because they look dated. With a little bit of imagination, you can upcycle them into some beautiful home decor that's gonna blend in with your modern decor. So don't overlook those secondhand treasures. They might just be that missing piece that you're looking to add to your home. these unappealing votive or I think they're called tart candle warmers at the thrift store yet there's always potential for them to become something much more beautiful with just a quick and easy coat of spray paint these dated finds can be instantly updated in this case it simply was just some matte spray paint that transformed this into a versatile and chic addition to any home style from traditional granny chic to boho it's amazing how just a small touch-up can breathe new life into a thrift store treasure I recently picked up this wooden bowl and a candlestick holder at the thrift store. We're gonna merge these two together into a single piece in an effortless way to upcycle. The secret, just a dab of E6000 glue or any other powerful adhesive that's gonna permanently fuse these items together. All you need to do is place the bowl on a flat surface and position the candlestick holder in the center and ensure that it's perfectly aligned. Let it dry and voila, in no time this up cycle can be transformed into a chic little catch-all for jewelry, a perfect addition for you to hold some keys, or maybe a stylish kitchen accessory to keep ingredients handy while you cook. Possibilities are endless and this DIY project is both speedy and uncomplicated. Let's try to upcycle one item a day for a more sustainable future. Next upcycle that was super simple is I had this old frame that I found at the thrift store. I love the blue, I absolutely love it, but I wanna put one of my prints in it. So I've got some coffee stain here that I've got just a piece of computer paper. I put some instant coffee and hot water in a little squirt bottle, sprayed it on this paper. This is a super fast, easy way to coffee stain paper. Get my heat gun dry it and this that fast you have coffee stained some paper i'm going to press it a little bit so it's nice and fast so it can go through my inkjet printer and this is my butterfly um ephemera that i've got in my etsy shop if you want to use this for any of your crafting projects it's absolutely beautiful i'm just cutting it to size to fit inside of my frame i cleaned my glass with a little bit of windex put it back in the frame and i'm just going to take my print and put it inside the frame. And once you see this all put together, the blue that was in the butterflies just kind of complements the blue in the frame. Absolutely love it. And especially with that music background. Again, you don't have to be all fancy and do graphic transfers all the time. You can just print off something, throw it in a frame, and you've got beautiful, affordable home decor. Next upcycling project was this candlestick wall holder. I had some black spray paint. I just took it outside. I gave it a coat of the black spray paint. And I had this plaque um, that I found at the thrift store. It's originally from the dollar store. I, got, I think it was a dollar. And I'm gonna decoupage a piece of my scrapbooking paper on top of that. Now, when I find I have thick paper that I wanna decoupage with, it doesn't lay as nice. So I have this little hack of thinning out your paper before you decoupage. So I'm just laying 
just packing tape on the back of that paper, taking off that extra layer, and it'll take your scrapbooking paper down to almost a napkin um, feel. So I'm just going to put some Mod Podge mat all over this plaque, and then we're going to lay that piece of scrapbooking paper that I've made thinner with the packing tape and it fit best on an angle so i wanted to make sure that i had it exactly where i want it press it down into that mod podge making sure that it's adhered really well pressing right around the edges and then i'm going to set it aside and let it dry completely okay that's completely dried i've just got a little piece of sandpaper and i'm just sanding all around the edges and it's going to leave a little bit of a distressed edge and clean off all of that extra scrapbooking paper. If you're enjoying my content, take a moment right now and hit the like button. Your support means the world to me and it helps my channel reach more people who will enjoy my videos. And with your help, I can continue to create fun and creative upcycles and turning trash into treasures. And I just wanna thank you for being a part of my YouTube journey here on my channel. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Now that I have all that extra scrapbooking paper sanded away, I sealed it up with some polyacrylic sealer. I added the candlestick holder onto it and one of the candles from that bag that I picked up at the thrift store. What do you think? I really like it and I think it pulled together really nice. Okay, next up cycle, this mirror was a disaster. It looks like somebody decided to paint over the mirror. Uh, so I'm just taking my scraper. I'm being really careful not to scratch the mirror underneath, but it was coming off really easy. So scraping away, taking my time, and I think I'm going to be able to upcycle this really easy. Hi, guys. And now that I have all of that paint, I'm going to take a little tiny bit of sandpaper. This is an 80 grit, and I'm just going to go over and distress any of the high edges. This is all that this needed. It just needed to have the mirror cleaned up and the outside kind of distressed a little bit. And easy thrift store find that I think upcycled beautifully. For my next project, I'm rummaging through my junk drawer in search of four old doorknobs. I have this wonderful idea to repurpose them along with a piece of salvaged wood into a fun DIY coat rack. Interestingly, these doorknobs were given to me by a friend who knew I could create something beautiful with them. So here's my take on it. To start, I'm sanding down that salvaged wood using a 120 grit sandpaper to remove all of that outdated varnish. I always ask my friends to save unique items instead of throwing them away. They know I love upcycling and transforming discarded items into something beautiful, and it's my way of reducing waste and avoiding filling up landfills. Instead of burning or wasting these items, I'm giving them a new life and purpose. Did you know you can create a cost-effective wood stain by just mixing instant coffee with hot water? It's a simple solution that works wonders for staining your DIY projects. Try it out and you might be amazed by the results. To attach the doorknobs to the piece of wood, I'm going to be using a product called JB Weld Steel Stick. It's a putty that you mix together and once it hardens, it provides a secure bond. I also have double-ended screws that are going to fit perfectly into the doorknobs. Here's how it works. I'm going to quickly mold that steel stick, ensuring it's a consistent color and blend it in and mixed well. Then you're gonna insert it into the bottom opening on that doorknob. After that, I'll place the screw into the putty and as it dries, the putty will act like cement, permanently fixing that screw to the doorknob. And this is gonna allow us to securely attach those doorknobs to that salvaged piece of wood. I enlisted the help of my husband because well let's just say patience and I aren't best friends especially when it comes to measurements with his guidance we marked the four spots where each doorknob was going to be placed on the wood and then I made a small test pilot hole to ensure that it was going to screw in easy now all that's left is to screw in those doorknobs and attach them securely to the wood before proceeding I let these doorknobs sit overnight to make sure that they were dry fully before we screwed them in 
important to remember that everything in this project was obtained for free. The salvaged wood was discovered in a pile of discarded pieces, and the doorknobs were generously given to me by a friend. These doorknobs are truly stunning with their unique weathering and patina. I'm grateful that I can bring these materials together and transform what would otherwise have been waste into something truly beautiful. This coat rack is headed to my cabin. It's gonna be a perfect addition and it's gonna complement that decor wonderfully. Another find from the scrap metal bin. This poor old little step stool or step ladder is in really rough shape. It's kind of crooked. The legs have kind of been bent a little bit, but I have a fantastic idea of how to upcycle this. I'm gonna take everything apart and give it a really good cleaning. Scrape all the loose paint off of it, give it a little sanding, and see if I can straighten up the legs a little bit. I'm not sure if I can, but look at that beautiful red paint that's on the bottom of this. I'm gonna try to recreate that red. And I had this red in my cabinet and it matched pretty good. So I'm gonna paint all of those wooden steps with the red paint. For the frame of this step ladder, I had this turquoise blue spray paint, which I absolutely love. I think it's gonna look beautiful with the red. So I gave everything a really good coat of the blue. Everything's completely dry and we're going to put it all back together. And here's how I upcycled it. A beautiful spot to keep some of my potted plants. I hope you've enjoyed today's upcycles and I'd love to know down in the comments which one was your favorite.